Hello everybody, this is uh, MegaBig9001. Today I am playing Louise's Vacation. This is an adventure game I made for the Toho Station Game Jam, and it might be playable at Fall Reitaizai. I don't know, that process is a bit convoluted, but yeah. So, yeah. This game was made for a Japanese event, but I'm an English developer, so there's an English version. Uh, boku wa sukoshi nihongo mo anashimasu. Soshite nihongo no transition o arimasu. Boku no nihongo warui, gomen. <laughs> and then, the programmer I work with is named Eastern Mouse, and he's Russian, so there's also a Russian version. So, this is the game of mine with most languages, so that's a pretty neat fact. Then we jump into the actual game. Yay, I finally escaped the Ginsokyo. So, general pitch for this was Eastern Mouse had an adventure had like an adventure engine, and we're trying to think of like characters who would fit it, and I'm like, what if Luis wanted to go on a vacation? Because as many of you know, I love Luis, and then I also really like Sumireko. And Sumireko would also love to explore Gensokyo, so that's where the idea of pairing these two together came from. So, what brings you here? I've always wanted to take a vacation. Yep. So, they are both outsiders from Gensokyo, but in a different sense. So we have this little tutorial area here. Yeah, so... Top-down perspective's a bit reminiscent of Zelda, but without the combat, so... At first, we just have this little puzzle-solving tutorial. Yeah, and then here is where we get our first... difference in abilities. So... Sumireko is a scrawny high school girl. Luis is a resident of Makai, so Luis is stronger and can push these blocks. And Sumireko, of course, psychic, so she gets to use these ESP spots, which allow her to open certain doors. Then here, we teach the player that sometimes things in the environment can be hidden. So if you notice this block, yeah, a bit different color, press X here. Yeah, and then the idea here is... So if you ESP this, the circuit doesn't reach anything. So nothing happens. But you notice this is a block, so Luis can push this. Sumireko presses X, and yeah. Then, this is probably the hardest one to communicate, because I don't know if people get it, but essentially, if you let if you get off this type of pressure plate, the bridge falls. So you need to leave one character there, push another one over, and then... Yeah. So the blue ones are permanent. No tutorial here, so this is the first real puzzle. So that happens. So you need both characters to activate this bridge, but oh no! You get off. This doesn't work, so what do you do? Well, this is where you get to... Push the block across the bridge. Music right here. Not all of it, but this song specifically was done by Prism River Orchestra. Because we're on the Yokai Mountain, so... I wanted to work with, like... Some music from Toho 10. And I thought this was a really good song to use for a tutorial area. Of course, Prism River did an excellent job. Yeah, so from a design perspective, you have the little... So you have the hidden ESP, 
you have boxes getting off of switches, you have the different types of pressure plates, and then you have this. So it's kind of an escalation of, like, the mechanics that came before. Now we get the God Potato. Aki God's Potato. Yeah, so these little things are souvenirs, and you collect them because it's like going on a vacation. You just find random trinkets. This song is not from Toho 10, but it's like... So, the science... The children in... Yeah, the children of the science era is one of my absolute favorite Toho songs. And I think in terms of exploration, this feels the feeling better than, like, almost any other song in the series. So I really wanted to get this song in the game. Got a Tengu camera. Yeah, so if you notice, like, the trinkets we've been finding so far have been, like, just things that would fit with the Yokai Mountain, so... This doesn't exactly look like an area of the Yokai Mountain you might know, but... It is, like, designed to be a part of it, in the sense of sort of world building. And it was fun to design a map to, like, work like that. Back when this game came out, Toho uh, 18 was the brand new thing, and that also introduced new areas of the Yokai Mountain. So I wanted to include a character from 18, and this is how we get to Kane. A human? How do you keep finding these places? Hmm? Are you the green kappa Marissa mentioned? Is she a kappa? Eh. Well, we're not here to bother you, so... Hang on, I've got stuff to sell if you want anything. Nope. My money-related endeavors in Gensokyo always end weirdly. This is a reference to Tsumi Reko getting swindled by June, so we'll just be... Hang on! Do you have any souvenirs? S er, yeah! Like this, uh, plush! Ooh, it's so fluffy! Well, if you want them. Tell you what, I'll give you a 100% discount on one of my items. Ooh. So, automatically, you can get this for free. So this was designed because we thought it might be a bit hard for players to try to find the ESP, but of course, you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. This is on the shop, so it's purely optional. And then just designing it to look like her face was pretty funny. Yeah, so here's the radar in action. So what's different here? Well, this block is off, so... Yeah, money. Yeah, just little things like that. Like, there's no combat in this game. That double coin glitch is still funny. But it's like, yeah, just the simple act of exploring. It's pretty relaxing. There's nice puzzles to get your, like, your brain going. I am really happy with how this game came out. There's a lot of cool stuff you're able to do here. Yeah. To me, this isn't, like, a dungeon. This is, like, the quote-unquote, like, Zelda overworld of this game. So that's one torch. Yeah, so we have one side there, and then... If you notice here, there's some blocks we can push. So let's get these in. The song's long, too, which is really good, because, like, you're exploring for a while. So here... Whoa, I can't see a thing. Is human eyesight that poor in the dark? I come from a world polluted by light, so our night division evolved. I might be able to use my phone's flashlight, but the battery might run out. So we can't go in this cave yet, but if we go back to, to, to Kane... One of the things she sells is a phone battery. <laughs> yeah, so like, the idea of like, finding other items to progress doesn't come up too much in this game, but that is one thing it does. We go in and... who is it? Yugi. Why? No good reason, I just like Yugi. I think this was also when 17.5 was coming out, so like, she was relevant-ish. 
Oh, you've got glasses like that one Tanuki. Are you that girl from the outside that Kasum talks about sometimes? So that's how you you would know who Sumi Reko is. This is Sumi Reko boasting, and then she's getting in over her head. So then you get the owning sake. Yeah, so Sumi Reko can't drink. So yeah, that's why that little blurb's there. So that is the little uh, smiley face cave. Then over here. So something's off there, right? So maybe if we push these blocks, we can find something. Funnily enough, I've seen people who, like, bring blocks over from the smiley face onto this island. Which is certainly a way to do this puzzle. Okay. Yeah, so that's where an ESP block is. Mouse if he ever wants to do anything with this engine again, because we have a lot of really solid bases. Oh yeah, I should mention, a lot of the graphical stuff was added post-jam, but quite a bit of this game was just made in about a week, because that was the game jam deadline, and that was one of the comments we kept getting like during the original event we made this for, it was, how did you all make this in a week? Production was a bit hectic, I will admit. Like, this was fresh off of me working on Inverted Heart, so I was still learning how to scope, so... Probably made a bit more than we should've been rushed, like, through a lot of stuff, but ultimately, we ended up with a really, really solid game. So I think most jam games would end where... we'll explain it in a second. So we got this... Okay, and then, little puzzle over here. So, of course, you have the brown pressure pads. Oh yeah, I can't push this over. Let's push this on here. And of course, these are permanent. Ah, I got myself with my own puzzle again. <laughs> Yeah, I like this one a lot. So the idea is... So like, you need these on the brown, then you need these four. So what gives? Well, these ones are permanent. So you just have to use one of these blocks from these this one first to get that. Yeah, so that's, that's one I, I dig. This one's just the idea of like, ooh, the ESP's are really good here, so that's how these spots happen. Yeah, now we have that bridge. Did I miss some gold? Huh, I guess I missed some gold, maybe. Oh wait, no, I think I- I think I vaguely- yeah, okay. That's where the missing gold here is. Yeah, so Takane has very practical uses. But then you have, like, the stuffed sea lion, which is in reference to the one the Kappa use. Of course, she's a rival, but... Maybe it's a boot like plush. Yeah. And this one has a little sound effect, which is funny. Yeah, so I think I wrote some of these, and then Wookie Walk, who also did some of the music, wrote a lot of the other ones. So we've got that. Then you have the doorway. 
yeah, so this is something I kind of like. It's like, you brought in a ton of different things from different games. So you have Yugi, you've got Takane, you have the Men Raiko, which is technically in 14.5, Sumi Raiko itself, Louise from Toho 5. So it kind of, despite taking Lisa on the mountain, it encompasses a lot of good in Sokyo. Okay. Okay, so here we have this little interlude scene between, like, the main game and the final part. What food do we have? The potato! Yeah, so I like this scene a lot, because here it's kind of, like, exploring the similarities and differences between Luis and Sumireko. It also helps to develop the relationship. Go through the door. It seems like it made a shortcut to a cave. One of the things about Luis is she has a transformation that like turns her eyes a different color and her hair a different color. So when trying to make a game about Louise, it's like there's not much material to work with. So I wanted to try to use everything I could. And here we can this also lets us introduce a new mechanic into the final section. So this song is uh Izanagi object from uh, neo-traditionalism in Japan. Because it's like, despite this being a, a location from Toho 18, you have like the crystals and then the tracks. Like these are the rainbow dragon gems. The actual like location is implied to be where Mary found her Izanagi object, and even the instruments in the Toho 18 track use like instruments from this track. So it's kind of cool to like get to make uh get to like tie the two eras together, and that's another part of what I mean. Like in this game, I tried to bring or we tried to bring like different parts of Gensokyo together. Yeah. So this one might be a red herring. I think it is. Okay. So if we look, this one I don't think it quite reaches. Oh, this ley line, like, this little up thing is what stops it from going. That's why we need to push these over here. So, get these on the ground. Part of me kind of wonders if this game could work in co-op, which I think it probably could, it's just like, I don't know if it'd be exactly engaging. I guess the issue would be you'd need to like, two cameras or one player controls like, the camera. Okay. I think this puzzle is really funny. It makes a lot of other people mad. <laughs> so like... It's probably one example of, like, I probably should have, like, tested more, because, like, this is a puzzle I like a lot, but the general public did not like that much. Like, even my relatives would probably be the least, like, the most lenient on my games, and just say, this is good, because that's, like, the developer effect of people not wanting to hurt your feelings. Even, like, my aunt was like, this puzzle is stupid. So the reason this block is here is because the idea is you have to push it outside of an entire different puzzle room to this next one to get, like, the temporary uh, pressure blades. Yeah, I really like this puzzle because I think things outside the box. I think a lot of other people just think it's, like, stupid padding. Oh, this doesn't even... Oh, yeah. So the idea is, 
because you need three, you need like three things on the switches, but then if you do that, if you just have that one block and then do characters, no one can get through. Yeah, and then there's the radar. This one torch isn't purple, let's fix that. I like this part a lot. So you have these broken tracks and then... So the idea behind this room is sort of like... This is where the battle against Misumaru in uh, Toho 18 took place. So that's why you have like these broken tracks. And that's why there's like the frog statue. I guess I skipped the dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. So again, more world building. Just little flourishes I added to this game. Okay. So that is, like, the hardest souvenir in the game to get, I think. So now... Got this. This is the one puzzle in the game I did not design. This was designed by Wookie Walk. So, it's a bit different from the ones I did. I'm also grateful that he designed it because, like, it's a very, uh, long puzzle. I don't know if I would have been able to come up with it. Okay, I remember now. Yeah, so you like this. So, like, it kind of utilizes a lot. So, like, I realized I couldn't go over the bridge, like, that way. So I need to do this. But now, how do I do this block? Well, Luis can change form and then stay on the switch at the same time. Now that Tsumirek is over... If we get off, now this bridge uh, circuit is permanent. And then you need both characters to progress. Yeah! So, you might be wondering what this way is. Well, there's nothing there. And I believe if you go down here, this is a hint to that, like, this is what's behind that area. So a bit more conservation. I think this shot was, like, used in the trailer because I thought it looked really cool despite you not actually exploring there. Can't even go that way. I think the sign tells you you can't go back after, yeah. And I think we had to do this because of the way the next puzzle circuit was programmed. Oh yeah, art! So, my college buddy, uh, Captain Diz, did a lot of the overworld stuff, and then the things like the thumbnail and like these little giant pictures, I think he also did that. But a lot of other assets were done by his friend Sketchably, they both did really good jobs. This one's interesting. So, like, for these blocks, you, if you, like, uh, use the ESP on them, then they become permanent and can't move. So the trick here is that you have to, like, activate the permanent pressure plates first. Before you do that, otherwise you get stuck. But this button would let you, uh, reset the puzzle if that happens. Yeah, and this is, like, the last puzzle in the game, so like, this one's pretty complex, yeah, quite a bit to it. Yeah, with all the decorations, I think those are still post-jam, but yeah, I think Eastern Mouse and then the environmental artist did a really good job making this place, like, feel monumental. I tried changing form on there, that won't work. So we got that. So this is another uh, form block check. Same idea of you can change form while you're on the block. Then I think there's one last bridge over here. I think this is just... So one side is like Luis's powers. This side is Sumireka's powers. Yes, that's there. You got Timmy Reckon and Luis, so then what's next? One last hurrah for both of them. So Luis pushes the block and then Sumireko can activate that. This is a thing I really dig. 
because it's like, yeah, they're both working together. This is the thing I like in games. Even if, like, story-wise, you don't see the two interacting that much, you still kind of get, like, this feeling of camaraderie between the two as they work through the game together. Yeah, and then we have, like, this dramatic opening of the game. And here we have the Magatama, which is something I still have plans to do things with. Yeah, the Izanagi objects, so this is implied to be, like, the same type Mary had, and of course it looks like Misumaru's Izanagi objects, or her Magatamas. Okay, so, this scene, so this is, uh, these are the lines Reimu says to Luis in Toho 5. This is Sumi Reko's past, so this is kind of meant to be her present in a way. And this is supposed to be, like, appear into the future. So, yeah, this game ends, essentially, for, as a setup for me to do more with Sumi Reko, which I explored a bit in Time Twister. I will say that Magatama is probably going to come up in a Heart's Amusement, you'll see. Yeah, but despite that, it still ends with, like... Yeah, just the two of them being friends. Is there a gift shop in Gensokyo? Yes, there is. It's a little... Uh, Renosuke reference. But yeah, that was Louise's vacation. Again, I really, really like this game, like, a lot. Like, yeah. Just very cozy game. I love, like, exploring and Zelda's my favorite thing. I like puzzles, and then... This is the first game I made where I didn't do any of the programming. I just did level design and writing, and just seeing it all come together was fantastic. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, this was a bit of a really long video, actually. I hope that makes up for, like, not as many videos. I will say, I'm working on something very exciting and Toho-related for college right now. I hope to show more of that later. And of course, I've still got some things like, uh, Men in Toho. I have this one video I've been trying to make for a while that I might finally get around to doing. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.